this is Kelly Michalko, and I'm speaking today with Mr. John Wilkins at his home in North Battleford. And today is August 14th, 1985. And first of all, I'd like to get a, a bit about uh, Mr. Wilkins' personal history, where his family originated from before they came to Canada. Maybe you can comment on that. Well, my father, Ernest James Wilkins, came to Canada in 1891, settled in Reston, Manitoba, with two brothers who had preceded him by one year. They, each of them, uh, had homesteads and uh, worked their way up into the farm community. My father's fortune was a little less than his brother's, and as much as his first year here, he had a serious accident in a threshing outfit, losing his right arm, making, making farm work difficult. However, he proved up his quarter section and went into business excluding the, pub, the farm. He first uh, entered into hardware store in, in Reston, and second in harness and baggage. And his accident caused severe strain on his health and uh, eventually necessitated moving to uh, Saskatchewan. However, he married in 1902, had a family of three boys, uh, all of whom moved with him to North Battleford in March 1911. He continued as a harness and baggage business on King Street, then 101st now, in a position adjacent to Cody's harness and uh, baggage and uh, hardware business. The, this lasted for not too long uh, due to the arrival of the automobile. Too many harness businesses wasn't re weren't required. He sold his harness business to uh, Mr. Bowers, Bowers Hardware and Harness, which was located where Sears currently is operating. And he and Dad went into real estate, along with so many others at this particular time, 1912 and 1913, and uh, that lasted until the bust of the latter part of 1913. Just to go back a little bit, um, before your father did come to North Battleford, um, last time I spoke to you, he said that he had in mind actually to go to British Columbia, but uh, something changed his mind to stay in North Battleford. Yes, he had planned because of the ill health. He, he was uh, going to BC, uh, but uh, a man by the name of M.J. Howell, resident in North Battleford, formerly of Reston, talked him into going to this thriving community he was going to make his fame and fortune. And so after your father got into the real estate business, he also formed a company with another man, did he not? And he formed a company with Mr. Titus, and they occupied uh, the wedge of the railway and, uh, and King Street, um, later occupied by Kaplan. And, uh, also in the same premises was A.P. Sayre, who sold uh, newspapers and uh, magazines, etc. And you were five years old when you arrived in North uh -huh. Alford at the time. And um, what was one of the first schools you did attend? Well, the, the family home was built uh, at uh, 1551 Main Street, uh, immediately west of the King Street School. So it was only natural that we all attend the King Street School. But I, my time, time in that school became very limited through difficulties of maintaining schools as such. I had uh, grade one, but through ill health, we had to start over again the following year in grade one, both of which were in the King Street. Then grade two was uh, 
partly in the Baptist Church and partly in the newly opened uh, Collegiate Institute. I see. Do you recall any of the uh, first principals or teachers at that time as a young boy there? Well, uh, Cameron R. McIntosh was a principal in 1911. I can't recall who was immediately after, but uh, later uh, M. A. Leet was principal of King Street, and uh, you might say I. A. Lawrence was principal of Connaught. And you attended NBCI in about 1917 as a grade five student. And this was because the King Street School had closed. Maybe you can explain a little bit better about that. The King Street uh, School became a barracks for the 232nd uh, Battalion. And uh, through that, the school, uh, King Street students went to the ground floor of the uh, NBCI. The uh, second floor was the collegiate students themselves. Uh, Connaught School opened about the same time as the Collegiate in 1913. And I suppose while you attended high school, um, as most students, you probably had various jobs. Do you mention any, any that you recall? Before you're going into the job creation, uh, I attended uh, in the Collegiate Institute uh, grade five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and then had to have my uh, 10, 11, 12 in the Connaught School because the uh, Collegiate Institute was closed for economy reasons. So the NBCI students were top floor of the, of the Connaught School. And also, the, the collegiate was closed be in the 20s because of the poor economic conditions, but also due to the uh, flooding of the basement. Oh, no. Or is no, that correct? No, that's not correct. I think you could scratch that, I think. Uh, that was later on. Uh, about what year did that uh, incident occur? I'm afraid I can't answer that. I don't think I was away from here at that time. Is that right? Yeah. But that, well, that mm -hmm. incident was much later than it was not in the 20s. Yeah, that's, that, was, uh, that was a later period. It was closed uh, in the two periods, and one of which was closed and someone neglected to shut off the water, so there was a very little economy in closing it. Okay. And now in regard to jobs, well, every kid had... Uh, extra work for various reasons and uh, I worked at Sterling uh, North Battleford Manufacturing Company a very short period and then I had various jobs at grocery stores uh, during uh, Saturdays and uh, holiday periods and before starting permanent employment with SASPEL in 1923. And um, one of the things that you're involved in as a boy was the uh, FEC club. What was that all about? Well, the FEC club was a, a group of boys taken from the uh, Pres Presbyterian and the Methodist uh, groups under the direction of a man by the name of Henrik. Uh, it was outdoors activity uh, this gentleman took us down to the river and various jaunts for our outdoor pleasure and education. In the wintertime, we went sliding on the hill that later became known as the King Hill, but at that time it was known as the SFEC Hill, or the name of our club, FEC standing for Fourfold Efficiency Club. And who are some of the members that you might recall in those days? Well, some of the members of the, in a picture that I possess had uh, uh, Ariel and Jack Sellers, Reg and Lawrence Gregory, 
uh, Lawrence Dutcher, Wendell Cairns, John Wilkins, and uh, many others. Mm -hmm. And um, did I mention Jack Boyd? Also, the Rotary Club kind of played an important role in your life in terms of a band. Well, in the uh, early years of my work, um, the, one of the pleasures at that time was a, a band that started up under the direction of H. T. Sheldrake, who was the manager or owner of the Optimus Printing Company and a member of the Rotary Club. The band was sponsored by the North Paddleford Rotary Club. They supplied uh, uniforms and music. Uh, the city supplied the instruments whether when they weren't privately owned. And so this band was uh, prior to, I guess, the, the Kinsman Band and probably would be one of the first type of bands in North Battleford then. Uh, th that followed into a city band directed by a man by the name of Townsend, and that's after I left North Battleford. And uh, uh, some of the nucleus of that continued on as continue, uh, the Kinsman band. And something, uh, I guess, kind of interesting in, in, in the uh, sort of mid-twenties was a, a series of fires. Uh, you commented on this last time, maybe. Well, one, I was initially a night operator at North Battleford for three and a half years, waiting my call to Saskatoon to start an apprenticeship. But during that period, we had a series of fires created by an incendiary. Twenty-one fires in one week. Uh, and uh, as was the case in many communities, they called on the operator to find out what's going on. And uh, it uh, caused it quite a commotion every time several hundred people would attempt to call one number on the switchboard. It was my pleasure or a displeasure in telling everyone what I knew about the location of the next fire. And what were some of the buildings that uh, were burned? Well, the old freight sheds, notably one, the um, North Battery Manufacturing Company barns, and with the destruction of two beautiful horses that had been the pride of Mr. Esplin, its driver. The uh, Monty Woods house at uh, 1401 96th Street, was another. Uh, I can't remember what other fires there were, but it was interesting. Caused quite a commotion then in, in the town. Um, in very, very much so. And uh, the, the fellow that started these fires was, as I found out, never caught, or he was caught sort of in a roundabout way. Yes, they, they pretty well understood who it was, but couldn't catch him in the act, but they managed to nail him on another charge and uh, he was apprehended and the fire ceased. And while we're speaking about fires, uh, you probably saw the type of fire uh, department we had. Maybe you can comment a bit about that. So. Well, Dad's first business was next door to another harness maker on the north side, which uh, burned down during the night. My uncle ran across the street to the, call the fire department and very shortly thereafter, the fire laddies pulled the rail down the street, not with horses, but manpower. North Battleford had water supply from 1909, so that wasn't a problem. But uh, Dad and his brother kept pouring water on the uh, top of uh, our building all night, buckets and all, what, else, what have you. Later on, the fire department was drawn by horses, the horses were city horses that normally in the daytime were used to supply people beyond the water lines with uh, drinking water. And uh, when the fire siren went, he pulled the plug so that the water would dispense and the horses were tingling away, jumping, they really wanted to get moving. 
and uh, the purpose of that was to get the horses back to the fire hall to, to haul the, the horse-drawn vehicles to the fires. And uh, you said that as you were a night operator with Sastel, and uh, you finally left North Battleford. What year was that? Uh, that you January 1927, went to Saskatoon. I had my apprenticeship at Journeyman and became a supervisor in 1945 or 6. Uh-huh. And during this time, I imagine your parents still lived in North Battleford or retired here, that type of thing. My mother did. Oh, I had a younger brother that was born in 1913, and he and mother resided here until 1943. Uh, my, my brother lay, resided here much longer than that, but mother died in 43, dad died in 1928. And uh, after your time spent in Saskatoon, you returned to North Battleford in 1948. In the fall of 1948, I came back as district manager of this area. Uh, and uh, I suppose during that time you come back and forth between North Battleford and Saskatoon, you saw the development, that kind of thing, but uh, was there any signs that uh, you that uh, felt that North Battleford was growing in those years, or that there was changes taking place? Well, there were constant changes. Um, I can't uh, dwell on that to any great extent. Um, when I arrived back here, what was so noticeable about growth it was following the war and uh, the applications for telephone service far exceeded the supply. There was congestion of cables, congestion of central office equipment that continued persistently for several years. Uh, but uh, many, many people had uh, difficulty in receiving service and the waiting list pers- persisted. It meant continuous growth, both for business and uh, residents, creating, creating that demand. And um, now I suppose you've recently retired, but you've led an active life in North Battleford. Maybe you can tell us maybe some of the organizations that you were involved with, and uh, I suppose through that you've been involved with North Battleford. Uh, going back a step or two, uh, in 1960, I was appointed district plant superintendent for quite a wide area uh, from the South Saskatchewan River as far north as you can go. And, and uh, prior to that time, I had been a member of the Kinsman Club. I became a member of the K-40 Club at age after age 40 and became a past president of that club. And uh, after some time as district manager, I joined the North Battleford Brewery Club, of which I became uh, president and later secretary for 11 and a half years. And my club saw fit to honor me with the Paul Harris Fellow Award for my service to the club. Before we finish here, would you have any other comments you'd like to make about some of the early history of North Battleford, uh, particularly regarding the, the business district and that type of thing in, in the city? The early uh, survey of the city created a wide street for Main Street. And uh, at that early period, the main thoroughfares were main and railway, the latter because of its proximity to the CN railway station. Main, now 100th Street, was surveyed, um, pardon me, it, <coughs> it developed with the following, two department stores, Pickle and Johnson and the Battleford Trading Company. Had the first drug store, the first MD office, the first dentist office, the telephone office was in the 
post office next door. The first theater, called the Lyric, was at 1092 100 Street, burned down in 1910. The second hotel was um, Keneally's Clarendon. It was a hardware store in Tinsmith, W. Collins, and the first two banks, the Imperial and the Commerce, were built on this street. And so that was sort of the, the center of activity, unlike today in a lot of respects. That was the center of activity at which gradually moved back to 100th Street, mostly stimulated by the movement of the, the post office to uh, 1102 and 101st Street. Well, thank you, Mr. Wilkins, and I would imagine that uh, you've lived in North Battleford most of your life, and you probably spend the rest of your retirement years here. Is that right? Yes, I retired in June 1970. I've enjoyed a wonderful 15 years, and I hope there are a few left, but it'll be right in North Battleford. Okay, thank you again.